Whipper. Happy Thursday, guys. It's Fitzy and Whipper. Welcome to the podcast. This morning, we're pointing out the most stressful time of the day for anybody. I'm and glad that I know this now, because you're right, it comes down to one minute. And outside of that minute, I'm just sort of drinking. And Is it in the morning or yeah, night? Yeah, it's in the morning. Yeah, see, it's getting the kids ready for school. And that's why we do breakfast radio. <laughs> <laughs> out of there. Get it done, honey. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose we're dealing with kids here, aren't we? Mm. In the studio as well. Nope. Now, there's an exact time of the morning where you are stressed out the most. I don't stress anymore. I reckon when you tell people about this in the podcast, there there will be people that will shiver. They they shiver and they will they'll twitch and go, yeah, that is a horrible time of the day. That's what they wrote that song about. Sends shivers down my spine and it feels divine. What song's that? Oh, show me heaven, God. Breathless. Leave me breathless. Oh. Maria McKee. Oh, thank you. Maka, in these situations. What was that, mate? Not in the system. I don't think you're allowed to add songs to podcasts. No, and Maka, I will sing till you give me the artist's name. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. I have got the best news for you guys. Amazing news right now. Drum roll, Maka, if you got one in the system there, because they have worked out the most stressful minute of the day. And it's 7.23, and that's just past, so everyone can relax now. Oh, I am a bit stressed Woo! at the moment, to be honest with you. What about, buddy? Single malt. Well, I just went for a quick wee, and I just realised I had to come back to the studio. You are right, mate? That haven't was 7.23. That's finished Haven't now. had my coffee yet. 7.25. Yeah, that gets you. De-stressing. I, do you know what? I'm stressing quite a bit at night now before I go to bed, because I like to go to bed before 9 o'clock. Mm. Boys are taking longer and longer to get to mate, bed. Mate. Yeah. Don't that, want to clean their teeth. That is killing me. Yeah, and it's, it's a real... Real. And then they're having to dig at each other. It eats as, into your time when uh, you do yep. early starts. And you know what I hate saying to them? Guys, can you just go to bed? I need to do work. Yeah. I hate saying that. Why are you always working? Get off your phone. Yeah. Cause Man, because I'm trying to entertain an entire city for three hours every oh, day. Yuck. I get you know the, what can I, mean? I have one more kiss, one more cuddle, and no, I hear myself can't. going, no! Yeah. I think, what? And I don't want to yell at them, but that, from my, my 6.30 to 8.30, is a disaster. Isn't it? And I just have to, I have to succumb to it well, and give in. And we're actually lucky that we're not at home during the most stressful time totally. of the day. 7.23 a.m. Yeah, not why bad. is this? It's not bad, is it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Can I just say, if you're listening right now, and you're on, in the car line or on the way to school in traffic in the car. I'm thinking of you right now. I'm talking to you and I'm thinking of you because research says it is the most stressful thing to do in your life during that time. Yeah. 7.23, often the school drop-off is the most stressful. There's nowhere to park. They might not have yeah. a drop-off line. And it is a fight. And it's ugly. And maybe your kid is crying and you feel like you need to find a park to walk them into school that day. But it's impossible because there's only eight car spots. It is hard, hard work. Can I just say, you know the way that I look at it, though? It's like going to the gym. We don't want to go to the gym. Hmm. We, we dread going to the gym, but we know if we, we work hard, and that's it's between that seven and eight, right? If you can get the kids to school, you do the hard work. You win. How good is the feeling afterwards? I like that you look at me, not with her for a gym analogy. Thanks, Fitz. How good do you feel after a workout? I went right? to the gym yesterday. I was a sauna and ice bath. <laughs> oh. And then went out for a Greek lunch. So sitting still. The gone. <laughs> um, What's a gone? <laughs> It's not funny. Oh, so they, a guy. So they talk about the most stressful things in your day, right? Uh, and they suggest some remedy rescues and things to get through it. But the top 50 most stressful things, number one was stuck in traffic. Number two is spilling something on your clothes or getting ready or spilling something yeah. on the carpet, dropping or smashing a bowl, waking up late. You know that feeling? Mm. And you go, oh, man. I've stuffed up. I'm behind already. Yeah. This race has started yeah, and I missed the starter's it's pistol. So stressful. I'm so... Burning food. Yeah. We all know that feeling when you go, hey, what's that smell? We burnt the toast. 
Hey, mm. uh, get us another piece, Dad, because I don't want that. It's black. It's long talk breaks in there. Um, being late for work, <laughs> forgetting carrier bags, um, being pooed on by a bird, spilling something on the sofa, being locked out, your car engine not starting. And this all happens at 7.23. Having a backlog <laughs> oh. of emails, a friend owing you money, losing your keys, experiencing road rage, ripping your tights. Road says. rage. You experienced experience road range. Up next, guys, oh, Sarah's going to reveal which <laughs> actor was first considered um, for the role of the whale. We know Brendan huh? Fraser, <laughs> Fraser is up for an Oscar, but no, it wasn't Whipper. Get your <laughs> costume. <laughs> right. Ever felt like a holiday after your holiday? Plan your next getaway on the What If app and access mobile exclusive deals. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable just in case your plans change. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Cricket kicks off today over in India. This series, and I know, MDG, you're very excited about this because, I mean, Australia and India would have to be the two best test teams in the world. And the hardest team, or the hardest team to play anywhere in the world is India over there in India. Oh, yeah. Have you seen what they're doing? And, I mean, we can't talk as a country when it comes to cheating. But basically, Sarah, (laughs) what they're doing Mm. with their pitches... This first test on the pitch, they're not watering a certain section of the pitch because we've got so many left-handers in the team. They want to harden up. Well, they're going to harden it up so so it cracks and the ball spins a lot more and gets all our left-handers out. Like, they're not watering it and they're not rolling this one area. Like, it's so blatantly obvious what they're doing. You can't do that. Yeah, but but both both teams have to face the same conditions. So yes. is it really? I mean, Pat Cummins has said that they're not buying into we, the politics of this. They're just going to get out and play. We have seven left-handers in the team. They have two. Yep, I mean... So that, that's <laughs> a huge advantage. Imagine if yeah. we walked out there with watering cans yeah. <laughs> and just started to sprinkle it's, it's before game. It's good. I just think we probably should steer clear of players walking out onto cricket fields carrying things that aren't allowed. Mm. It just really didn't point. work out totally. well last so time. So true. <laughs> hey, MD, do you know what I did on Twitter last night? I got some great reactions here. I just asked people for the best one-liners on the cricket field. Great. Oh, okay. Hey, you, you love those, don't you? What did you used to use, MD? No, I just get day. traffic pig gear. I, I just... At me. Yes. I don't use it. I don't come in and bowl and go, that's busy on the M5, champ. Like, <laughs> that's... No. That's rubbish. People <laughs> no. think it's funny to say it to me, though. No, because I... It's not. I, no. I, you know, our, our, the, one, the one that we always used as kids was we've seen a better batter at a fish and chip shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah swinging like a rusty gate. Yes, yes. Uh, good one. Yeah. Well, Huey, Huey, I, when I go watch Huey play cricket, he and his teammates sing this. They go, that ball is history, the next ball's a mystery. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's cute. Really good. I used to do a bit of... Here we go. Your mum's your sister. What? No, no, that's got nothing to your do with Your mum and dad cricket. are cousins. What's that got to do with cricket? Just general banter. (laughs) (laughs) Just generic sledge. Enter generic sledge. (laughs) That's some great, great answers here. Your undies are on your head. This guy's guy's had more blocks than a Lego set. That's not bad, yeah. More edges than a Rubik's Cube. Okay. More nicks than a Greek wedding. What? (laughs) That shot was as convincing as your dad's wig. Oh, oh that, ed- that edge was thicker than your mum's moustache. Oh, that's what? rude. <laughs> My son says uh, his mates use, come on, there's more singles here than Love Island. That's okay. really good. Okay. That's really good stuff. Bowl him a piano. Let's see if he can play. That's pretty good. Hey. Um, when someone drops a catch, couldn't catch the train. Uh, couldn't catch a cold. Couldn't yeah. catch anything. More blocks than Donald Trump's Twitter. That's, that's a good that's one. That's very funny. Seen, Quite a topical. Better, seen, seen better bats in Wuhan. What do you mean by that? Oh. That's really... You know, there's been a lot of deaths. So I will not laugh at that. Tom submitted one. Couldn't catch crabs at the cross. Oh, oh. he did. Oh, but Tom <laughs> did. This is a good one. Twelve-year-old son was playing cricket. I'm umpiring. Kid on the opposition plays and misses two or three times. And this smart-ass kid at Gully says... Someone get this kid the Wi-Fi password and see if he can connect to that. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. And the last one. Hey. This bloke's got more strokes than a nursing home. I don't oh. get it. Oh. oh. Of course. oh. Yeah. Could have said a massage part. Yeah. Here's some cricket one-liners. <laughs> yep. If you If you are playing this weekend, good luck to the Aussies today. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. How's this? A retired baby boomer. Well, everyone's been talking about this with the... Well, our interest rates are up to 3.35% now, and it looks like they're going to continue to go up. But a retired baby boomer, her name is Kerry Boylet. She's 68 years of age. She sparked a bit of a firestorm, along with the millennials are having a crack at her because she said... 
says, well, you kids have got it a lot better than we did. She's 1995. Um, she said it was practically impossible to be approved for a home loan as a single mum. She bought her first home in sit in Coogee for $150,000 with a 15% deposit and she said the variable interest rate at the time was 19%. She struggled to make ends meet. Um, she said, I ditched kitchen i did my own kitchen renovations i ditched nights out i would have dinner parties at my place for friends instead of going out i would buy two kilos of meat making salad and spaghetti bolognese and cake and i'd do it all myself but her advice for the millennials was as you should be giving up your phone save on your phone bill and start putting into your own home loan but when it's hard you need the escapism there's a fair bit of back in my day yes going on at the moment isn't there well but back in my day if they went and this is just, it's yeah. so frustrating because they always turn to the, well, the interest rates were 19%. Yeah, and your average income was about 40 grand and your house was 150. And now the average income is about 65 grand and that whoa. same house is worth two and a half million. Yeah, it so is. if you tell me whoa, it's the same whoa, whoa, thing whoa, whoa. and we're fighting the same fight, you are kidding yourself. Do you know what? I sat next to an old lady on the plane not long ago and she had five kids and I said, we've got three and it's a real battle. How did you do five? And she said, well, back in my day... We didn't have anything else to do. Mm. Oh. Well, there's the solution. Yeah, Life and they, used and, to be simple. And mate. they also had a house with a front yard and a backyard. And now most people live in a two-bedroom unit. Mm. So having a, a family with five kids is impractical. Yeah, well, Plus it costs a million yeah, okay. dollars to send them today. Okay. It doesn't uh, uh, make uh, sense. Sam's still angry. Okay, can we go to a man who witnessed all of this in the 80s and 90s? Mick Fitzgerald is his name. Hi, Dad. How are you, mate? How are you, buddy? How yeah. you come up? Uh, g'day, Mick. Okay. You're live on the radio. You might have to put it on speaker because your memory's like Keith Richards, I think. It's, <laughs> you've struggled over <laughs> the year. Mum's listening. Okay. Hi, Mum. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah. Morning. Good, morning, good, good. Claire. Mum, can you tell everyone, what, the house that we had at Christie Downs, how much did you guys buy that for? Okay. We bought that for 29000 back in 1977. Yeah. And we, we had 4500 saved. We went to the bank manager and he said to us, sat down, he said, I, I, I don't care whether you beg, borrow or steal, I will not lend you a cent until you have 7500 in there. Right. Now, that was a quarter of the price we had to have saved okay. for our bank. Quarter. So we drove straight up to mum and dad. They wrote out a cheque. We got the place straight away. But oh. we had to have... Water. 25%. Right. So, so, Mum, can you can you re also remember the 19% interest rate days? Like, was it really, really tough? Ab hey, Ryan, absolutely. absolutely. But, but you know what? We, we, we prioritised. Yeah. We had three things. Mick and I had three things in our marriage. The first thing is a roof over your head. Yeah. The second thing is... Uh, food on the table. Yeah. You're going to have kids. You had to have food on the table, and the third was to pay your bills. Yeah. And those three things we did first. Other than that, huh. we never went on holidays. On on we never went overseas no, on trips. We couldn't afford it. Didn't even look after your kids. No, you were hopeless. You what, didn't have anything. Well, we did look after. You had food. No. Okay, you might have. Had you no. might have had your billabong top, but you had your billabong. Billabong. Yeah. yeah. You kept us broke. You kept us broke, kid. Yeah, but I mean, Mick, you would have had to cut back, um, you know, on your favourite drinks and that sort of stuff. You didn't have the vibrating chair back then, but you would have yeah, had to go for the the simple oh, brand no. beer. Dad could still get his Bacardi, couldn't you, Dad? That's for sure. <laughs> Well, that that was part of the budget was uh, Bacardi and and uh, brandy. So no, hey, Mick, think back. We used to drink the cheese in Spano or something like oh. that. All we could afford back then. Mississippi and moonshine, Mum. Pardon? Mississippi moonshine, I remember that. You, and then we have, and you'd have parties. That was the thing. I, we had lots of barbecues with cheap meat. I remember out the back, and you just invite everyone over to the backyard. Yeah, exactly. But that's what that, that was what you did. So, and, and back in those days, I mean, if things were tight, everybody talks about a side hustle now. But Mick, could you have picked up another sort of lawn mowing um, side weekend job or anything like that? Oh God, I was working hard enough as it was. I was, I was working at least ten or eleven hours a, a, a week. A week. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, do you remember what your pay was like early nineties, late eighties at all heat surfaces when you were an electrician there? Do you know what you were taking on? Oh, uh, probably about 300 bucks a week, Mum. Yeah, gotcha. That's amazing. Do, do you know the funny thing about Mum and Dad as well? Dad is still on it. Mum gives 
Dad gets pocket money every week. Oh, so he's, he's on guys, allowance. You guys still sort of budget, don't you? And Dad, Dad, you oh, how, absolutely. how much does Dad get a week, Mum? Well, he gets <laughs> he gets two hundred a week. Good. <laughs> and Only if he's a good boy. Claire. <laughs> how does he go with that, Mum? Is he good saving, or is he does he spend most <laughs> no, weeks? No. Yeah, no, he, he, he's shocking, to be honest. No, but listen, when things have gone down the last few years, he has reduced, he has been reduced. Yeah. So we do it all according to... His behaviour. <laughs> and that is, Mick, Mick gets, that is his spending money to do with whatever he likes. Yeah, no but, bills, crazy no horse. Nothing. Yeah, but you know what, yeah, I mean... Some, to, to think about the parties you had to go back, you know, house parties back then because you couldn't go out. You know, they were skimping on proper ingredients for cookies, weren't they, Claire? Because they were throwing herbs into one of the ones you had. They used to make home these homemade cookie clipper. Friggin' shocking they were. <laughs> well, Mum, you passed out at a party, didn't you? Because you didn't know what was yeah, in there. Yeah, oh, exactly. They were had certain ingredients in there that didn't agree with me. <laughs> but, jeez, you were bloody good on the PlayStation after that, Mum. <laughs> oh. No, no, I did, we just wanted to go back just to see. So what do you think of these days? Do you reckon the kids have it easier or it's just as hard for kids to get into the market now and survive? You know what? To be honest, I reckon it, it, it is way harder. Mm. But they've got to prioritise, right? Yeah. The mm. kids are... Today you've got to prioritise. Get their priorities right. Mm. Where, because, where are they getting it wrong, Claire? Well, well everything's on higher purchase. They've, they've got to... And put, they go in way too deep with us. Yeah. Dead, you know, yeah, like, dead. That they don't, we always had a bit of savings as well. We always had a bit of money. A little tiny bit here and there. Yeah. That we could save so that if something really drastically happened, well, you've, you've got a bit behind you, but... And, but you know what? Sometimes I do blame, blame the bank because they shouldn't lend out. Some, some, some of those banks don't even lend out or le- are lending out a hundred percent. Yeah, people don't dangerous. need a deposit for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. You get one thing go wrong, or a marriage breaks up, or whatever. Yeah, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. We should do a weekly finance segment <laughs> yeah. with Mick and Claire. Yeah, yeah they're on fire think? today. It's amazing Mick's been able to keep his Playboy yeah. subscription yeah. going from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's... Be- Dad's... Two, two, two bought coffees a day and a sandwich. That's, That's all he gets. Next. That's all he can squeeze into the well, $200. Yeah. Well, I know Dad's buried a lot of money over the years. We're just trying to work out where it is. And don't well, worry... Where I've earned it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate your finance advice. <laughs> Everybody's depressed now, aren't they? <laughs> thanks, Mick. Thanks, Claire. Tommy couldn't get Koshy on or any of the no, other. No, waiting on Koshy to call me back, guys. Other <laughs> financial advisors. We need, We're really scraping the barrel <laughs> there. You said you we had the barefoot investor coming on, Tom. You <laughs> literally Mick threw his thongs Scott off for the chat. Coming up next. Oh, no. Nope. Mick and Claire Fitzgerald. <laughs> wow. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Love to know what the name of your team was. Maybe it was a community team. Maybe it was a work team. You got a few mates together and decided to take on the local comp. And no doubt you had a creative team. What was the Nova team you had made in Adelaide? Well, the vaginas. The vaginas, yep. Um, there was five of us, five guys in a social basketball team. That's nice. The Nova... Giners, and um, we also had a basketball team when I was younger because it, it was the Adelaide 36ers were big in South Australia, but we were the Adelaide 3.6ers. So. That's not oh, bad. When we were cute. kids. Sort of junior. Yeah. yeah. That's really cute. cute. Uh, I thought that was a good I one. I really like that Because yeah, we were um, sort of the, the mini version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I got it. Certainly yeah. got what that. I mean. So because yeah. it's the 36 and then and you just put a yeah. decimal point in there. And the I'm the three. Clever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember a mate of mine had one and they were called NBT. Not bad thing. Thanks. Hey, how's it going, NBT? Why wouldn't you just call it Not Bad Thanks? I don't know, they just shortened it. Not Bad Thanks. But then you have to keep explaining yeah, it do. to people, don't you? Yeah. The joke's lost. It wasn't so much a team name, but the Canberra Raiders cheerleaders used to be... They're a team, mate. ...sponsored by the... 
Hog's Breath restaurant. And so they'd be, welcome out the Hog's Breath Raiderettes. And then on the way out, give it up for our Hog's Breath girls. And I'm like, oh, just such a disappointing. I mean, you take the money. It's better than morning breath. The Hog's Breath girls. <laughs> How good are our Hog's Breath girls? All right, cheer out the Hogs, guys. Oh. That is unbelievable. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't doesn't fit, bit. does it? It's not no. the perfect fit. It's not the one you oh, wanted. Yeah, check out the curly fries. Uh, 13, 24, 10. Love to know what your sports name was. Uh, the two. Uh, let's talk about the live tour. Cam Smith, the golfer, right? Can you believe that, for one, he's getting $100 million sign-on? Like $100 million to sign on to play in this comp. Live, yeah. And then he's going to make more money, guaranteed prize money, as the comp continues and the tour continues. Yeah. I mean, I know there's controversy around this competition. Yeah. I would suggest that 99.9% of people would sign on for $100 million. Oh, yeah. Second to that... No, if you well, look, that's incorrect, because the majority of the golfers well, have golfers, it. I'm talking about the average man. Oh, right, yeah. Well, you, you've got to be good at golf. But second to that, <laughs> right? Second to that, if you're worried about it, why doesn't he come forward and go, hey, guys, out of that hungy, I'm going to give $50 million. I'm going to take $50 million of their money and give it to charities that need it here in Australia. Yeah. For those that, that don't get why it's controversial, so the Live Golf Tour is backed by Saudi Arabian money yes. and obviously the human rights issues. And so a yep. lot of people are going, hey, you already make a couple of mil over here. Mm. You're now taking $100 million of dirty Arab money. And they go, well, yeah, but it's $100 million. Yeah, but just offer a little bit back over here and yeah. say, hey, let's, this is good business because I can take yeah. it from them. Yeah. Uh, and put it into this great nation. Well, anyway... Give him, a, give him a call, see how you go. Yeah, Will, he's come up with a name for his team. And have a listen to this. Hey, it's Cam Smith. Welcome to Ripper GC. It's just Ripper, mate. <laughs> Ripper What's GC? Name? Ripper yeah. Gold Golf Coast? Club. Golf, oh, golf Club. Oh, yeah. Gold Coast. Not Ripper's Golf Club. Yeah, <laughs> Ripper's <laughs> Gold <laughs> Coast. <laughs> Where do we like to party, guys? Ripper's GC. <laughs> I think it's Ripper Golf Club. But he's just wanted to Australianise it it's not and go with Ripper. Ripper's a How are things, mate? Do you like Ripper more or Belter? Oh, Belter. Belter. Yeah. That was a Belter. It was yeah. a Ripper night or a Belter night? Belter, was a Belter. night. Belter night's yeah. better. But it? isn't it great that it seems to be that we're going back to the basics of celebrating Australian things like Bonza? So Bonza, the airline that launched during the oh, week, yeah. Bonza, <laughs> we got that grab in the system, Tommy, of Bonza. They've got three planes that are operating at the moment. Uh, have a listen to this. This is a bloke who went on the inaugural flight for Bonza Airline. Listen to the names of the planes. Australia officially has a brand new low-cost airline. Bonza's been cleared for takeoff and is the first budget carrier to launch in Australia in 15 years. So we joined the maiden flight to see how it flies. We checked in at Sunshine Coast Airport and hopped on Baza, the 737 MAX. Fun fact, the airline right now has three purple jets in its fleet, the other two being named Shazza and Sheila. <laughs> oh, no one wants to ride a Sheila to Melbourne. Don't they? Oh, no. See, oh, <laughs> you're the only one that could do Man. that. I know, that's why I did it for you, Fitz. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Ed Sheeran, we know he's up for a bit of fun, right? We've done a lot of great stuff with Ed Sheeran over the years, which is awesome. But I love this, which I saw he posted on his Instagram last night. He had a day off in New Zealand, so decided... <laughs> I just love, I love how quick Macca is to throw in the New Zealand national anthem. Dave Dobbin's back, everybody. So what's our Australian song? Land Down Under, I suppose. Well, it would be or... Um, John Farnham. John Farnham. Yeah. Nah, no, people don't... Horses? People around the world don't play You're the Voice. Do you know what? They play You're, they they play you're the Voice in the UK as the last... The last song in the pub. They would play Land End under Men at no, Work before they play this. This is the last song. Everybody oh, knows it's there? closing time. <laughs> All my mates in London say this is it. They cry as they walk home drunk, missing the homeland. I know, John. Um, I was sitting there when, oh, yep. when the Chili Peppers were deep in their new stuff. Going, yeah. every major concert in Australia, every band that comes should have to do a cover of You're the Voice somewhere in their set. Oh, Interesting. that's a massive every call, show, mate. <laughs> Because John can't anymore. So everyone who comes to Australia should oh, have you don't, to do You don't Your know, the mate. It's like paying a tax, is it? <laughs> yeah. Still recovering. If you want to perform you, you have to just, pay the tax. Just three minutes of You're the Voice and then back to whatever you want to do, Chilies. Can we have a listen to what Ed Sheeran did yesterday when he uh, decided on his day off to drop into some schools? Have a listen to this. On a day off in Auckland, uh, I thought we'd come to some schools and give some kids a surprise with a uh, free gig. Ed Sheeran. Give 
me goosebumps. How Not many a... were the kids and how many were the female teachers? No. Shouting the... out the words there. All the kids were singing. Yeah. Some of the the looks on their faces. Oh. When he comes out after the principal said, I've got, I've got a surprise for you today, guys. Flax- Ed Sheeran. Flaxmill Primary School had Mark, chairman of the boards, Davis from <laughs> Adelaide 36s. Oh, yeah. Probably up there with Ed Sheeran, That's I would say. That's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> we should say to Ed Sheeran, yeah. if you've got a day off, let's hit the road. So let's go to as many schools as possible. <laughs> that's oh, what he wants to do another, on a day off. Well, that's what he just did on his, his day off. No worries, Whip. <laughs> so what, what we do... Thanks for the call, mate. <laughs> uh, you there, Whip? Sorry, mate, you're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Ed a call this afternoon. I was a big guy. Oh, jeez. Mate, when you land... Awesome. Yeah. So then we can go to maybe one, two, three, four. Let's get a bus. We'll get some beers on the bus. And then... Oh, oh God. It's another pub tour. It's a school tour. <laughs> The schools can register, but they don't know whether we're going to turn oh, up. Oh, that's like imagine that. that. And the yeah. bell goes. Yeah. Everybody to the assembly hall, please. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Sheeran. We couldn't get Ed Sheeran, <laughs> but we've got Whipper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bucking bronco and I can come pronto. Oh, They'd all be sing- yeah. <laughs> You can only do this if you're a tier of seriously famous. Imagine if you said to your mate, what are you doing on your day off? <laughs> and he goes, I'm just going to go and surprise the primary school. <laughs> Call the cops immediately. I can't do that. Oh, man. <laughs> Just <laughs> hanging out with Tom in the bush. <laughs> oh, all right, <laughs> mate. Because <laughs> right, it's out, it's okay. The Fitzy and Whipper Podcast. Lights, camera, hilarity. Trending stories in entertainment. Brendan Fraser, who is up uh, for the Oscar for Best Actor for his role in The Whale. He is up against Austin Butler, who is obviously up for Elvis. He's defended. You know how everyone's sort of ripping into Austin a little bit for still sounding like Elvis and behaving a bit like the character? He has defended his uh, Austin's dedication to the role. I can understand what he's challenged with when you really commit to a role. Because yeah. I'm guilty of wearing cowboy hats long after I stopped playing cowboys. So, <laughs> You've done this. Yeah, I know the deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, you invest a certain amount into it, and you take it with you, and then it worked for you, and then you want to hang on to it. I, I don't well, know after that's... Encino Man, I believe you <laughs> ran around as a caveman for that's three right. years. Isn't that correct? Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And you can't knock his role. He was outstanding. I know, wasn't he? He also revealed to um, another person who was in the running for that role that he got was James Corden. Oh. For Elvis Presley? No, oh, no, sorry, no for, for the, the whale. whale. Brendan oh. Fraser, sorry, for the role. <laughs> yeah, that would have been very different. Maybe at the end, but not at Sorry, the start. you're talking, yes, Austin Butler was incredible as Elvis. Yeah, that's sorry. Brendan yep. Fraser in The Whale, which everyone is raving about. Uh, James Corden was apparently also up right. for that role. Who's seen The Whale? I don't think it's out here no, yet. Right, but no. it, it, everyone is raving about it. I had a friend who went and saw it and said, oh, my gosh, it, this is okay. an amazing... I saw Whale Rider. Very different. Show out of New Zealand. Zealand show, yeah. It's about an actual whale. Um, so is this about a whale? It's about a man a... struggling with obesity. Yeah, you, haven't you seen the, no, the buzz around this? No. This has revived his career and everyone's saying it's one of the most powerful yeah. performances that we've ever seen. You'd be a bit, no, I don't know. If you got the phone call and you were a little podgy, you'd be a bit, whoa, 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 wouldn't you? Well, yeah. he had to put on a lot of weight for the role. He's yep. a taller bloke. He's not large, but... James Corden, I can see the link. That's unkind. Oh, no, but gosh. I mean, let's be honest. There's no point beating around the bush. Guys, we, we're telling a story about somebody on. that's carrying a couple of kegs. Well, hang on. The pairing is obvious. Not body shaming. I'm not. I'm not over no, no, here. You're the only one in the show crack. that can talk about this. Well, I am. Why is that? I'm surprised I didn't get the call. Now I'm moving on. Salma Hayek has revealed this awesome story. So how about this? She married her husband 13 years ago, but she had a real phobia of marriage. So she said on this day, she didn't know she was getting married. Her parents and her brother what? came and picked her up in the car, took her to the courthouse where the, her now husband was, and right. they all pretty much forced her to get married. She said it was like an intervention. She said she wanted to be with him for life, but had a real fear of doing the actual marriage. Yeah. And then her family had an intervention and forced her into Oh, it. my God. Yeah, so she walked down the aisle and she said a few months later, yep, 
they threw a big party and the whole thing, but to actually get her to commit to doing the marriage. Oh, sh- well, yeah. that's, a, that's a good story that she's still with him, though. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's a billionaire. Not to say that that's why, but... Where are we off to, Dad? Well, you know, I'm a bit religious. The, the first time as a family we're heading to a church. Isn't that amazing? But So she was concerned about the commitment or the actual day turning up and the, the actual celebration? Sort of all of it. She said, I just yeah. never wanted to get married. Uh, it just wasn't a thing for me. And my family was so... They teamed up with the... With the mm. Yeah. boyfriend and said, no, we want to make it happen. How did she go at the first dinner party in the honesty box and that was <laughs> not different? Did she not she was fine. <laughs> she is starring in Magic Mike, which is out in, um, in time for Valentine's Day. And I was thinking of Tommy who told me this morning that Inga wants to take him to Magic Mike this oh, week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does she? Yeah, yeah. Saturday night. She said, will you come with me to watch <laughs> Magic Mike 3? She's so better off going by herself. Yes. Yeah, totally. My life flashed before my well, eyes. Well, let me help you out, Tommy, because yeah. I put this story in for you. Thank you. The the director of Magic Mike has mm. done an interview where he said he can confirm there is no nudity okay. in the film beyond the shirtless scenes of the men. Yeah, okay. Okay. There's nothing else other than that. No, it's we, fantasy, mate. <laughs> well, we went and saw Fifty Shades together. Oh, my God. Well, that's Three. very risque. That was very like, No one. one's wearing clothes for 90 yeah. minutes of that. But, uh, yeah, so this Saturday we'll, we'll, well, now that I know about the topless stuff, Very sexy, in. but only tops us. So yeah, you there, don't so need to take right. cable time with you like you did to Fifty Shades. My apologies. I mean, you might be able to get a couple of moves out of this. You never know. <laughs> You're so... You are the opposite yeah. to, to Magic Mike, aren't yeah. you? Like the well, complete... I think so. Yeah, no, look, I, I am. and um, Still sexy. Huh? In your own uh, way. Yeah, everyone's sort of got a, their own kind of sex Sort of middle-aged yeah. woman look for those into that. Oh, says the bloke who can make sex appeal disappear, Magic Mike. Oh, oh, oh Sarah. Good. And for my next trick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how do you? The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. All right, there it is. All right, girls, let's dance. Do you know, I just, all I think about these days is crystal clear water. And you know what? I know you can go down to Himes Beach, down the south of New South Wales. The white sand. sand. But you know what? That white sand and that beautiful mm. crystal clear water. There's a new island that's opened up. It's called Bitcoin Island. Awesome. Now, it's in between Philippines and Manila, and it looks amazing. I mean, have a look at that. Look at the colour of the water. Bitcoin Island is about to fall on your holiday radar, so get your crypto wallet ready. It's known as Borica. It's a tropical paradise, but you can only use crypto there. And it's amazing. Crystal clear water, white sand beaches. Right, so if you don't have any Bitcoin... Then no, you, you got to transfer Bitcoin. your cash. There's Bitcoin Beach. You've got the Bitcoin Beach oh, there as well. Can I go for a swim in the Ethereum pool? Well, th- this is the thing. Uh, it's written... I'm just trying to think what else you can do on the islands there. Mm. Is the Ripple Sports Club open? Here's the other main attractions. They've got the Confusion Cruise. It's a beautiful sunset cruise where everyone tries to explain to each other where their money has gone. <laughs> and what crypto is. There's a massage parlour there, Sarah, where you can mm. take your partner and slowly massage into her that your life savings have unfortunately been invested into Dogecoin. Um, well, what about this? There's beautiful walks up mountains yeah. and, then, and then you fall straight, straight off down. a cliff. Um, oh, this sounds good. The Bitcoin buffet. Or you can preach. Um, you, you can tell as many people in the restaurant that you have crypto for as long as you want. The good thing is, too, if you can't pay your bill because you spent too much, you can just do some day trading at the end and quickly make a fortune. And this is my... There, you can get married on Bitcoin Island, oh, which yeah. is great. It's a got? wedding venue. Actually, what's the difference between investing in Bitcoin and getting married? None of them last. If your marriage fails, you only lose half of your wealth. <laughs> <laughs> The Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.